Father, today we're grateful for another privilege that you've given unto us to come together in this house of worship. As we stand before your great people, I pray that you will hide us beneath the cross and cover us under your blood and let your word have free course and meet the needs of everyone in this place tonight. Let the word go forth tonight with clarity. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God for each of you. Praise the Lord. We are glad that the Lord has allowed us to come together one more time. We should never take these privileges for granted because many people, thousands, multiply by thousands, are destituted and deprived from the privilege that we are enjoying tonight. And it's, it's not because they're bad people. It's because God is good to us. And, and we ought to be grateful to him for his goodness to allow us to come together one more time. Praise the Lord. I, 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 uh, one of my, my Barbara, uh, late wife, worked for a rich white woman. And she told her, her name was Ada B. Richmondson. Adder B. Adder B. Richmondson Bryant, and she said to Adder B., she said, Adder B., while you're up, go to all the places that you can go to. Make every trip that you can. Enjoy your life to the fullest of your ability. Because one day you may be down and can't go anywhere. So when you, if you go and do while you're up, and then if it ever should come a time in your life when you can't do, then you have that to draw from. She, she said, if this woman had been all over the world, basically. She said, it's such a pleasure to be able to draw from the thing that you have done in your life. So don't take these privileges uh, that we have for granted. You don't have to be able to be here tonight. So you ought to be glad that God gave us the opportunity to come together one more time. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, God bless you. God bless you. Do all you can while you can. Then when you can't, you have no regrets because I did, I did what I could do. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible, we're in the 13th chapter of our uh, First Corinthians. We are, hopeful to, we are hoping to cover the entire chapter. It's only 13 verses, I believe, in the year, 13 verses in the 13th chapter. And we're going to go over that tonight, hopefully, and glean from that what we see in this. Uh, it is talking about love. That's our theme tonight is love. Actually, you can be seated. Uh, Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. And though I have the gift of, a gift of prophecies and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I could remove mountain and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Then it tells, verses 4 through 8, it tells what love is. Charity suffers long and is kind. Say that with me. Char love, suffered love suffered long. And while it is suffering, it is, suffering. It is, kind. It is kind. Now that's love. You, you see, a lot of times we suffer and go, but we're bitter. It said, charity suffers long and is kind. Tell that person, be kind while you're suffering. Charity envy is not. Charity vuns not itself. It is not puffed up. That's love. Do not behave itself unseemly. Seek is not her own. Is not easily provoked. You're not looking for something to criticize others about. You, 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 you prefer getting along with others more so than not getting along with them. That's love. I have a hard time with anybody that love to fuss and argue. I don't enjoy conflicts. Sometimes we have to have it, but I don't, it's not something that I look for. The Bible says something like that, he that will love life and seek good days. How did that go? Huh? Let him reframe his tongue, that's right, that he would speak no evil. Let him 
seek peace and oh, that's me. I love peace. So I seek peace and I pursue that road. I'm not looking for no confusion with nobody. Because I love, love wants to get along. Help me say love wants to get along with everybody. Now, when you say love wants to get along, but it doesn't mean it's going to get along. Bible said, as much as lies in you, have peace with all men. You make sure that you are not the problem. That's what the Bible is saying. All right. It said, charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity bonds not itself. It's not puffed up. Do not behave yourself unseemly. Seek is not her own. How, how in the world can I see love in you? You got to have your way in everything. Y'all, y'all don't want to talk to me. Any wife that want to have her way in everything is a hard wife to get along with. Any husband that want to have his way in everything is a hard husband to get along with. There must be a spirit of parity in the house. Sometimes the wife is right. Sometimes the wife is wrong. Sometimes the husband is right. Sometimes the husband is wrong. Then if you're wrong, you ought to be, you ought to be, you ought to be holy, slow down, slow down. Get my tongue tangled up. If you are wrong, you ought to want to be told that you are wrong so you can get it right. Am I right? I mean, don't be, can't nobody tell you nothing. I don't care how good you are, you don't know everything. I promise you, you don't, you don't, tell me other than cabbage what I had to eat today. I did say other than cabbage. I had something there beside cabbage, but now you tell me what it was. You weren't there. So you don't know. But I did have some cabbage, too. That's why I said other than cabbage. Everybody knows I eat cabbage often, you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows that. But anyway, uh, praise the Lord. So you don't know everything. And stop acting like you know everything. See, when you act like you know everything, you become difficult to approach. Know what you know, then respect what others know. That's love. Respect what the next person knows. They have a right to know what's good, just like you have a right to know what's good. So if a person knows something, respect them for their knowledge. President Obama is a brilliant man academically, but he is a spiritually... <laughs> He's strong academic. I, I respect his academic, but I don't respect his spirituality. Oh, Y'all got cold on that one. I don't respect nobody who stands in favor of gay marriage. How can I respect it when God does not respect it? And I'm a servant of God. So he is brilliant academically, but he is very ignorant spiritually. Our president, love him. Pray for him. But he needs some help spiritually. All right, do not behave yourself unseemly. Seek is not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thank is no evil. Don't be so quick to thank evil other folks. Just because they don't do things the way you do it. But they don't do it the way I do it. Well, who told you the way you do it is the right way? Or the best way? I'm not saying that. The way you do things, I've been doing this all of my life. I remember I was, I was training this choir up at Willow Grove Baptist Church on Highway 7 between Brownsville and Jackson, Tennessee. And my cousin was pastoring this church. He asked me to go up there and work with his choir. So I, I was working with his choir. And I never shall forget this, 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 this incident because of, uh, I was placing the voice and putting the soprano in that proper place, the alto in that proper place, and, and the tenor in that proper place, setting the bass, setting all the groups in that proper place where they could be together for better blending. So this lady sat on the front row, the prayer row, and she was singing alto. And I said to her, do you sing soprano? Oh, yes. I've been singing. I can, I can hear her now in my mind. I've been singing soprano for 21 years. I said, praise the Lord. Reverend Nate Cooper was playing the piano. I said, Nay. I said, I asked her, do you know the song? Oh, so what a fellowship. Oh, yes. I said, I'm glad you know that song. We're going to sing it together. And they played in the soprano chord. He played the soprano key. She couldn't pull one note. But she'd been singing soprano for 21 years. Sometimes longevity to make you look bad. I didn't ask her how long. I asked her, one quick, do you sing soprano? Because I could hear her voice. She was singing that alto. So I said, play it. And the soprano said, play it. He played it. I said, sing with him. 
Jesus. He's praying, he's praying the soprano chorus to sing with him. She couldn't pull a single note, but she'd been singing soprano for 21 years. I said, Nay, would you mind playing that same song in the alto key? She sung perfectly. I didn't have to ask her to move. She got to move herself. I showed her that she was wrong. I showed her that she was out of order. If you're out of order, let somebody show you that you're out of order. Don't get mad. You're the one out of order. Are y'all hearing me? Then, then after she got back in the studio, she said, well, I'm glad I learned tonight where I, where I sang. She thought she was singing right soprano for 21 years until she was shown that she really sang Ariton. Be flexible so folk can come to you if you're off so they can get you back on. You don't want to ride down the road, you don't want to ride down the railroad on a track or with a, in a train that's off the track. Because you substitute, they go over in the ravine. But if it stays on the track, you'll meet your destination. Be able to be told something. Don't pretend you know everything because you don't. No one in here and nowhere else knows everything. But you know what you know. Am I right? And respect what other people know. Like that, we can get along. Now, he said, do it not behave yourself unseemly. Seek is not our own. It's not easy to provoke. Thank is no evil. Rejoice is not in iniquity, but rejoices in what? Bear is all. We're talking about love. This is the first eight, verses 4 through 8 tells you what love is. Okay, he said, bear is all things, believe is all things, hope is all things, endure is all things. Then it goes on the eighth verse. It said, charity what? It didn't say it didn't say it, said, it never fails. Isn't that what the Bible said? Shouldn't we teach what the Bible said? Charity what? Never. But will there be prophecy, they shall fail. Will there be tongue, they shall fail. When there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in parts, we prophesize in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. All right? When I was a child, what happened? When I was a child, I did what? I speak like a child. It, it it's, it, it, it's just like a child to speak like one. Praise the Lord. Am I right? It's just like a child to speak like a child. And not only, why is that when I was a child, I speak as a child, the reason, it's a reason, because I understood as a child. You can't speak beyond your understanding. When I was a child, I speak like a child. I understood as a child. I did what else? I thought like a child. Is, is, is that out of the ordinary for a child to to, 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 uh, to, 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 for a child to speak like a child, to think like a child, and to act like a child, it's proper, it's, it, it's proper for a child to be a child. I hate to see a child trying to be a grown person. Take your time and enjoy each year. Am I right? Enjoy year number one, number two. Don't miss some years now. Stay with, I mean, enjoy every year God gives you, enjoy. And then when you, and then he's not through. He said, now, he said, now, I, I thought it, but when I became a man, what happened? I, I hate to see a man acting like a child. I hate to see a woman acting like a girl. And I hate to see a girl acting like a woman. A boy acting like a man. You'll be a boy, you'll be a man soon enough, don't worry. Don't try to rush it. You, you, you'll be a woman quick enough. And then sometimes when you get up there, you're like, gosh, I sure wish I had a, <laughs> no, I wish I had to stay down there, you know. But it's too late then. But now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then should I know even also as I'm known. And now about this, and now about his faith, hope, charity, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Love is the foundation of the Christian faith. I'm going to say it again. Preacher Harris, love 
is the foundation of the Christian faith. Without love, we don't have no faith. Without love, we don't have no salvation. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came and gave his life because he loved us. Greater love have no man than this, than the man would lay down his life for his friends. Chapter 13 is the continuation of Paul's discussion on the question of spiritual gifts, as we discussed that in verse chapter 12. Here he emphasized that to possess spiritual gifts without having love amounts to nothing. Now you could be ever so gifted spiritually, and it seemed like that you can move mountains. And, but if you don't have love, if it's not operated out of love, if it's not operating out of love that is operated for personal gain, for personal prestige, that's, God didn't give you a gift for you to boast yourself in. That's not why he gave it to you. Gifts are for the building up of the body of Christ. That's what it's for. We, we use our gifts to be a blessing to others. When love is proper, Ella gives, when it's proper, it always points outward. When it's proper. When all roads lead to you, your love is in the wrong place. And I always kind of use this as an illustration. This uh, this germ hand sanitizer, rather. This is a flashlight. Now, as long as I hold the light out this way, I don't care how dark it is, if I shine the light out this way, I can see. I can expose that which would otherwise be kept in darkness. If I take the same light and turn it back in my face, I don't see nothing because it blinds me. That's the way love is. When it all roads lead to you, you're Blind, can't nobody get along with you because everything got to please you. Your love is punted the wrong way. It needs to be punted towards someone else. You don't fall in love. You love yourself, but you don't fall in love with yourself. You're supposed to fall in love with somebody else. Dr. No, you're supposed to, you're supposed to have fallen in love with Dr. No. It's not like I'm talking to the same person. He, Dr. Knows. Supposed to have fallen in love with she, Dr. Knows. Am I right? And that's the way it's supposed to go. You don't fall in love with yourself. If you fall in love with yourself, then can't, can't nobody how to get along with her except they do everything for you. That's a bad way to be. In a home, in an in a, in a, in a, in a, in a organization, I don't care what it is. If you got a leader that's in love with himself, don't love nobody else, oh, he's terrible to deal with. She's terrible to deal with because of the fact love is pointing the wrong way. So he, he emphasizes that to, to possess spiritual gift without having love amounts to nothing. The most excellent way, which is pointed out in the very last verse, the 31st verse of, of, of the 12th chapter, it said, but covet honestly the best gift and yet show unto you a more excellent Way. The most excellent way is the exercise of the spiritual gifts in love as we have just addressed verses 4 through 8. It's the only context in which spiritual gifts can fulfill God's will. We don't want the, full, we don't want the spiritual gift, Ella Coleman, to fulfill our will. We want it to fulfill God's, God's will. Why is it? that we want it to fulfill God's will. I'm glad you asked that question because God is the one that gave the gift. If you put some money into an investment firm, you're not putting your money into the investment firm to make the investment firm uh, rich, and they're going to get rich, though, of your money you know, in order to pay you a, a profitable dividend. But the bottom line, you put in your money to build your own fortune. That's why you invested. For them to make you some money. Am I right? 
You don't put your money in something for your money to be lost. You put it there for a gain. So God gave the gift. And he wants a return from his investment. Am I making sense? I, I, I don't want to talk to me at night. He is the one. That, it's a gift. It is a it is a so you didn't acquire it was given to you. So you use the gift to fulfill the will of the giver who is God. Am I making any sense at all? All right. Love must be the governing principle of all spiritual manifestation. Paul therefore exhausted the Christian to follow the way of love, the Corinthian rather, to follow the way of love and equally desire spiritual gift. They must earnestly desire the things of the Spirit because they sincerely want to comfort and bless others in their lives. Verse 2, so though I have the gift of prophecies, I understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am. I'm not, now, don't, don't, don't look at Brother Turner. Say, Brother Turner called, the Bible says. All I'm doing is emphasizing what is taught here in the Bible. Let me read that second verse again. And though I have the gift of all prophecies, I understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. What does the Bible say? I ain't nothing. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked that question. What does that mean? It means you are nothing in the sight of God. Doing all of these things and don't do it for the right reason, for the right purpose. In the sight of God, you get no credit at all. Because you're using it for the wrong reason. Praise the Lord. Since y'all will sit down, I say, hallelujah. Praise him. If you have all of these things, and don't do it for, out of love. You are nothing in the sight of God. That's what he's really saying here. I am nothing. God doesn't even see it. He's looking the other way. Because your purpose is wrong. We have to, see, God knows. Paul said to Peter, Paul said to Timothy, rather, you have known my man of life. You have known my purpose. Man of life and purpose. So the question is, why are you doing what you are doing? You're going to be graded not on what you do, but why you're doing it. God knows the heart of every one of us. We are going to be graded from him based on our whys. A lot of folks are doing things for themselves. You watch for when they get mad when you don't call that name. Why you get mad? I didn't come to church to call your name. You ain't died for me. Come on here. I came here to call on the name Jesus. And we ought to be calling his name together. If we're saved, he's the one that saved every one of us. He's the one, if your mother was saved, he's the one that saved her. If your grandmother was saved, he's the one that saved her. And if your daughter is saved, he's the one that saved her. And if your granddaughter gets saved, he's going to save her. So what am I calling your name for? Y'all are not saying too much. I came here to call on Jesus. <laughs> Even the baby talked on that way. Y'all won't say that the baby, see? <laughs> Glory to God. Those whose lives are filled with religious activity are not necessarily approved of God. That's a preacher, I'm told. I heard Many people in my community, probably Deacon James probably heard of him too. I won't call his name. Uh, uh, if I call him, he probably heard his daddy talked about him. They said he was one of the greatest preachers ever going through Haywood County. That's what they say of him. One of the greatest preachers ever going through Haywood County. And I, I heard my father talk much about him. Boy, they said he was a, some kind of preacher. Highly gifted. They said on his deathbed, he made a statement. 
He said, I've saved many, but I'm lost. You can be ever so gifted. And I'm going to tell you something. If you, the more gifted you are, can I just take a, a moment to talk to you tonight? The more gifted you are, the more prayerful you need to be. Because with success come that attending train of evil, pride. The devil wants to say, the devil wants you to feel just like the mouse felt on the elephant show. You know the story of the mouse and the elephant crossing the bridge. You know how, how big a mouse is, don't you? And you know how big an elephant is. So the mouse was riding on the elephant's shoulder, and they crossed the bridge, and the bridge shook. The mouse said, man, didn't we shake that bridge? That's the way flesh is. Every time God does something wonderful, you want to say, boy, I know, I know the Lord used me. If he's using you, just be glad and be thankful. And keep in mind, he's using a tool in his hand. If we can keep our minds in the right place, that I'm a tool, I'm a vessel in the hand of God, that keeps us on. If you're saying good, thank God that he gave you a voice. If you talk eloquent, thank God that he gave you clear speech. I wish I could speak eloquent. Hey, some folks know a whole lot of different English. I have <laughs> some folks have a whole lot of different language they speak. I'm having a problem with, with English. Come on, here. <laughs> are y'all hearing me? All I'm saying to you tonight is that make sure that what you're doing, you're doing it to glorify God. Because I don't want to be guilty of doing all the things that I do, and then God says, I, I, I don't know nothing about you. That's a sad. The preacher said on his deathbed, I've saved many. Many got saved through my ministry, but I am lost. That was his testimony on his deathbed. So it can't happen. You can be ever so gifted and still be lost. I don't want to be lost, y'all. <laughs> if, I can, if I can't do them, but wave my hand. I want to wave that hand in salvation. If I, if, that's all, if I can't even talk, just wave my hand. I want God to be pleased with my hand waved. Because I want, when I leave this world, I want to go down full of grace and truth. I want to go down knowing that he's pleased with my life. Am I, am I, am I, am I, am I saying anything tonight? Some ought to tell him thank you in the house. Now, for example, those who speak in tongues, prophesy, have knowledge, achieve great work of faith. Yet at the same time, like Christ, like love and righteousness, all of us should be motivated, should be encouraged, should work at, trying with everything within us to be just like Jesus. He should be our model. I want to be like him. That's why I love that song. I would never quit singing this song perhaps as long as I live. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be just like Jesus in my heart because he is the one I want to be like. I respect what God is and who God is in you. But I'm not patterning my life after you. I want to be like he who died for me. The one that saved me from my sin. I want to be like him. And I want to have his love working in my life. God is looking at us for having a love of him. We, we need to have his love. We need to act out of his love, see things out of the eyes of God's love, hear things out of the ears of God. We, want, we all want to be like Jesus. When folks see us in our community, they ought to see somebody that's connected with God. My wife and I was walking this morning, and I was telling her something that General George Patton said. He was, he was on, on, on the battlefield, and he needed some good weather. And the weather was real bad, so he told the priest, he ordered the priest to pray for some good weather. The priest was a major. He said, Major, I need you to pray and ask the Lord to give us some good weather. So the major prayed. He told you, to, 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 see, George Patton was a general, so the general had authority there. He, he ordered the, <laughs> the, the major to pray for some good weather. He said, these men out here fighting, I need some good weather to be able to get to the next point here. So the priest prayed, and the weather cleared up. And they were victorious in their effort. He said, this priest need a promotion because he has connection with the Lord. <laughs> 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 he 
Even George Patton recognized that. That man needs some, he, you, they need to promote him to colonel because he got connection with the Lord. When folks see you there to know that you have connection with the Lord. That's what Christianity is about. If we act like Jesus, if we talk like him, if we love like him, if we bear all things like him, if we endure like him, folk will know that we have a connection with our God. We are representatives of him. He comes and descends in us and sends us out into the world. And we are to be a reflection of him. If I ask everybody here to take out your driver's license and look at it, it looks just like you. Am I right? But it's not you, because it's in your pocket. You talk to your driver's license, don't say anything. But it looks just like you, because it's a reflection of you. You look in the mirror, you see you. As we walk into the world, folk ought to see God. They ought to know that we have a connection with him. Will somebody tell him thank you? All right, let me find something here to you. Now, having knowledge, achieve great works of faith, yet at the same time, like Christ, like love and righteousness, are nothing in the sight of God. In God's judgment, their spirituality and profession of faith are empty. My God, that's bad. To be doing a whole lot of stuff, folk that, whoa, bless you, pray to God, say, I don't see nothing in what you're doing because the wrong purpose is behind it and the love, it is not being done out of the love of God, it's being done to promote yourself. And there's a lot of that going on in the church today. Many churches have, ter- have turned into literally entertaining sinners. You go to church to, to be entertained for social reasons. This is the house of God. This is where we come to worship here. Are y'all hearing me? We ought we, we are to come here. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And David loved God. He was glad to go to church. Whenever I can get to church, I, oh, I'm glad to go. Praise the Lord. I remember Mrs. Adline Warkin. I don't know if Cap will remember her or not. James will remember I'm a few years older than here, but she died at the age of 88 when I was a boy. Uh, she lived about four or five miles from church, and her means to get to church was walking. When Miss Airline walked those four or five miles to get to church, and she and she did that up until. She, she, didn't, she wasn't sick long. Maybe she may have been down six months to a year. I say at least 86 years of age. She was still walking to church. And when she came in the door, you know she came in. When she finally made it to the house of God, she walked in the door with a praise. 80 some years of age. Had walked four or five miles to get there. And when she walked through the doors, she came to the house with a praise. One song she used to sing, I'll never forget that song. And that song was Don't Forget the Family Prayer. But Jesus will surely meet you there. I remember her singing that song many, many years ago because when she came to church, she came in with her praise. She blessed God because well, she was glad to be at the house of God. That woman would walk back home after morning service and walk back for night service. If no one took her home, she walked back home in her 80s. We got calls and got all kinds of excuses. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Every member of the church ought to be here tonight. Every member of the church ought to be here tonight, except if you're at work or something like that. This is, this is midweek service. You ought to want to be here. Y'all, y'all don't talk to me too much. Thank you, Sister Jerry. I appreciate that. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. See, see, see we can have these, these, these spiritual professions, and in the sight of God, is completely empty. They are not only lacking in spiritual fullness, but are also empty of his indwelling presence. The spiritual manifestation through them are not from God, but from another spirit. If it's not to glorify God, then it's another spirit. When the sons of God were to present themselves before him, guess who came also? Say the right there. Another spirit was there. God dealt with him. Have you considered my servant Job? Another spirit. Don't operate out of another spirit. If it's not from God, then it's another spirit. And that other spirit is the spirit of Satan. 
using you in the house of God for, to, to make folk look at you. We shouldn't, be do the, we shouldn't be doing anything in the church to draw folk to us. Our job is to point people to Christ. He's the one that died. He's the Savior. Am I right? He is the one that extended back to heaven. He is the one that's on the right hand of the Father. He's the one that's interceding for you right now. Why should you fail when Jesus is still praying for you? Oh, God. The spiritual manifestation through them are not from God, but from another spirit. That is an evil spirit. What is essential to true Christian faith is love expressed through an ethic that does no harm to others and persevere in loyalty to Christ and his word, words. We talked about that love is patient, verses 4 through 7. Charity suffers long as kind. Charity in is not. Charity bond is not itself. is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeking out our own. is not easily provoked. It's not easily provoked. It's not easily provoked. It's not easily provoked. Don't be so quick to get mad. Don't be so quick to get upset. Don't be so quick to misunderstand. Sometimes you get, you get upset because you, you, didn't understand what was, you didn't understand what was said. You assume something was said that was not said. And you, now you're upset. Somebody said, I didn't say that. Oh, I thought you did. Well, well I asked him to repeat it. I didn't, I didn't quite. I thought you said this. I never shall forget Uncle Wash, my brother eyes and daddy was uh, making a statement in Sunday school one morning. <laughs> Uncle Wash was a very uh, aggressive person. And he was just talking. He said, I don't treat everybody like. He said, I don't, I don't treat everybody like myself. That's what he said. I don't, I don't treat everybody like. One of the sisters, her name was Luberta Perry. She said, brother, I think you're wrong. Uncle Wash was sitting down when he said that. He said, I don't treat nobody like that. He kind of moved. He said, I don't, he, he, was, he was kind of, you know, transfer. He said, I don't treat everybody like myself. And he was a, she said, uh, brother, I think you're wrong. He stopped. He stood up. He said, sister, you probably misunderstood what I said. He said, I said, I don't treat everybody a lot, but I treat everybody right. She said, oh, I'm sorry. You don't treat everybody alike. But you treat everybody right, don't you? You don't treat everybody alike because everybody's not alike. He was right in the statement. He didn't say he didn't treat everybody right. He said, I don't treat everybody alike. And she understood him to, to have said, I don't treat everybody right. That's not what he said. So if you don't understand, ask, what do you say? So you can get clarity before you criticize and judge. Y'all ain't saying. All right, now you rejoice it not in our nickel. Don't, don't rejoice in other folks' downfall. Rejoice, but rejoice in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, and doeth all things. This session describes love as an activity, as an active activity and behavior, not just as an inner feeling or motivation. <laughs> Some folks think the Holy Ghost ain't. Ain't, ain't about nothing but make you feel good. Ooh, hallelujah, I feel the spirit. Wow. That's wonderful. He's more than that, y'all. He equipped you for service in the earth. You need the Holy Ghost for strength, for guidance. You need him more for shouting. Oh, I got the Holy Ghost. Woo! All on the place, right all around the wall. My sister with a revival here. I mean, serving God, she got just run all over the church. Just run all around the church. Just shouting. Wow. Just having a good time. Just shouting up. Preacher got through preaching called for prayer line. She's the first in the prayer line. I'm telling the truth, he's a sister. It puzzle him. What are you doing this shouting for? You know, when you call a prayer line, she's the first thing in the prayer line. Shouting. Just shouting doesn't strengthen you. You need more than a shout. How would you like to have a husband? All he does is shout. Shout and John. Just shout all the time. Don't go to work. He ain't got time to go. He got to shout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a good husband. He shout all over. Just, just shout all over the place. 
Don't pay no bills, but he is a shouter. Well, shout it the same way in the church. If you don't shout, don't do nothing. You're no good for the church. You, you need to do more than just shout. The Holy Ghost is more than about a shout. He's going to send you the Holy Ghost and he's going to make you shout. You don't find it nowhere in the Bible. When the Holy Ghost came, they were sitting. When he came, they were sitting in the upper room. And he came up with all of them. And they all spake with tongues and the Spirit gave unto them. But he came to give them power to execute the will of God here on earth. That's the purpose of the Holy Ghost, to strengthen you, to encourage you, to build you up, to direct you, to equip you. All you got is a tongue. A shoe is more than a tongue. It's got a soul to it, too. Am I right? We need the Holy Ghost to equip us in the earth that we can be what God well, the Holy Ghost will tell you, don't say that. Don't go there. Leave him alone. Leave her alone. Now, the, the bottom line, will you obey? Why, why would he say, leave her alone? You think he doesn't like her? He knows that she's not the right one for you. Doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with her. She just said, she, she's just not the one I have chosen for you. If you pray, I'll lead you. To the right one. That's what the Holy Ghost is a leader. He's a teacher. He's an equipper in all truth. Are y'all hearing me? If we, if we hang with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I like that word. If we hang out with the Holy Ghost, I promise you we'll be all right. He will never lead you wrong. Our bad decision didn't come from the Holy Ghost. Our mistake didn't come from him. It came for our own mind. We call a lot of stuff God, God ain't said nothing. I just want it. And I, and I, I just want him to approve of it. Something you need want, he ain't gonna never approve it. Because it's not for you. It's for somebody else. Tell him, tell him thank you now. So we, 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 we need him in our walk with God. He, uh, it, it, the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. Say with me, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. is more, more than a feeling. And yet, you feel him. Lady D is my wife. She's more than a feeling. And I would like to think I'm more than a feeling to her. Feeling don't cook no breakfast. Come on here. Y'all not talking. Hmm? She's more than a feeling. She's a, she's a woman. See, with the word wife comes another word, duty. With the word husband comes another word, duty, responsibilities. With the title pastor comes responsibility. Missionary. After you're a missionary, then you have responsibility to be a missionary. Y'all got quiet again. Deacon comes with responsibility. Oh, I'm the deacon of the church, but I ain't got time to go to church, but I'm a deacon there. <laughs> what good are you to the church at home when the church is in the I'm, Oh, I'm the, I'm the chairman of the board, but you, you show up once a, once a month. I'm a great, I'm a, I'm a man of God. You show up at your own convenience. I don't know why y'all won't talk to me tonight. Y'all, y'all, y'all hard on brother trying tonight. Y'all, y'all won't talk to me. I'm, try, I'm trying to say what I think. It is saying here, okay, the baby's aspect of love include here, character, the baby's aspect of love included here, characterized God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Every believer must seek to grow in this kind of love. To grow in what kind of love? The love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every believer should, should seek to want to be just like Jesus. Am I right? Every believer should seek to want to be just like Every believer should seek to be just like Thank you. Though they have tongue, they will be still. They will see. Charity never faileth. Will there be prophecies? They shall fail. Will there be tongue? They shall cease. Will there be knowledge? It shall vanish away. 
There come a time in the history of the church, the history of Christianity, the history of God, history of God's plan, that these things will no longer be needed. When God takes the church out of the earth, then the spiritual gifts will no longer be needed. As long as the church exists in the earth, the spiritual gifts are needed because God dispenses himself through the gifts that he's given those that he have chosen to use these gifts. And they are there for the betterment of the body of Christ. Never to glorify the man or the woman. And, and we have to be careful when we hold position. God used our lives. He has given us spiritual gifts. We work in these gifts. We have to be careful that we don't let folks make God out of us. Because they'll do it. They get you in all kinds of trouble with God. They can't talk unless they call you. And you need to say, like Bishop Clark made, Bishop Clark made, a, made, made, a, made a wonderful statement. He said that when he first got saved, see, every time one of his, his children got sick, he ran next door. But the missionary lived next door to him. He ran next door and called her, come over and pray. He said, one day, he went and knocked on the door, so she was, he saw her sitting in the room. She, she was sitting down. So he knocked on the door, she just kept sitting there. See, now it's time for her to teach him something. You, you see, so we, 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 when we get saved, we, we, we kind of like a parasite. We like to live on the prayers and the ability of others. And God wants to come on up. When you first get saved, yeah, but, when, but you ought to grow. A baby, yeah, cry, cry for a month, two months, three months, six months, a year. Five years old, you expect that boy to walk over with a ball in his mouth. Pacified at the age of five. He should have grown. Am I right? That same principle of apply to the spiritual walk. So he said, he knocked on the door. She said, I'm looking at him. He said, he kept knocking. So finally she got up. Opened the door. What do you want? He said, kind of shocked him. He said, well, my, my, my wife is sick. Aren't you saved? He said, she talks to him rough. He said, yes, go, you go pray for her then. Go back in the house. He said, that's what started him praying for folks. She made him grow up on the spot. Are you hearing me? You ought to grow. You ought not every time my call prayer line, you're the first in the prayer line. When are you going to grow? <laughs> I had this experience that happened to me. Some of you was in there, some of you probably was in the line. I was doing a revival for Ella Gray up in Staten, Tennessee, and around. And now, I said, Lord, tap me. I'm supposed to be strong. I've been preaching to my folks. I've been preaching hard to them. I know my church was, I knew my people were strong, quite full of them that Friday night. So I preached that Friday night, praise the Lord, and called for a prayer line. Everybody left the choir stand. <laughs> I didn't get to pray for his folk, my folk. Was <laughs> Been praying for them all the time. When I called the prayer line, everybody left the choir stand and came and got in the prayer line. By the time I got to his folk, I was almost dead. You know? <laughs> I went on pray for them, but I had a good talk to them when I got back home. <laughs> I remember. Early in my saved life, Charlene, if I remember this, Ella Mosley, we were over at Pastor Cecily Church, and he had preached that night over there. And boy, every time a prayer line was called, I was right in it. Want to get some help. <laughs> that particular night, now he was at Pastor Cecily Church, now he'd he been praying for us. Every time we go, he'd be praying for us, praying himself out of wind, or praying for us. Over at Pastor Cecily Church, time he called prayer, Margaret and I, first, he hopped up. He said, brother and sister, turn, go back and sit down. <laughs> he rebuked her in pastor, go and sit down. I'm trying to pray for these folks, and you the first thing I know you. <laughs> Why am I saying this? Sometimes I can't pray for the young saints, for your old saints running in line. You need to gain some strength. You ought to be praying for somebody else. Why you don't talk to me? You're supposed to be the big brothers and big sisters of the church. And you can't, I can't have to pray for the young folks for you taking up all the prayer. Come on. Here. I don't know whether there are time we need to, we, need, we all need to be praying for one another. When do we catch on to faith? 
time somebody else pray, I want to get on the line, I can agree and get the same blessing because I realize that it's done by faith. Somebody tell him thank you. When I preach, I don't automatically pray for folks. Not by laying on the hand. I do it as I feel led to. Now some ministers, wait time they preach, that way they, maybe that's where they feel led. I'm not bothering them, I'm talking about me. I pray, for, I call a prayer line when I feel led to call one. Because I know if I call one, they're coming. <laughs> you worry about that. Folks love you, they hand. Oh, they love you, rub on them. Come on! <laughs> and you wear them out. You make babies out of them. I don't want to make it. I want you to grow up. Grow in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole level of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. Praise the Lord. Now, spiritual gifts such as prophecies, tongues, and knowledge will cease at the end of the age. That time is described as when the perfection comes, that is, at the end of history, when the believer's knowledge and character become perfect in eternity after Christ's second coming. Until then, we need the Holy Spirit and his gifts in our churches. Any church that don't have the Holy Spirit is a dry church. I heard a preacher preach, Reverend E.L. McKenna. He's the late Reverend E.L. McKenna. He preached his sermon down at Calvary Baptist Church on Dunlap many, many years ago. And he preached from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. He talked about dry bones. And he said something. If you are not in the will of God, your preaching is a dry sermon. If you are not in the will of God, your singing is a dry song. There are many people that are talented, but they have no anointing. See, talent is, we need more than talent. We need the anointing because talent is wonderful to entertain, but we need the anointing to break yokes. Only God can break yokes. Only God can reach the soul. And we don't get caught up in our talent. We, we must spend time. You're not going to have no anointing if you don't spend time with God. I know I told you the truth. God is not going to anoint you just because you have a talent. He anoints you for the time you spend in his presence. You have a whole lot of knowledge, and yet R. W. Shambach said, Shambach, brother, slow down, Philemon, slow down, so I can talk good. I had talked to y'all, I talked to myself. I get too fast. R. W. Shambach said, he's a man, he was running revivals. Man, going city to city, running revival. folk coming from everywhere. He said that particular night, he's, he was soaking wet, had prayed and preached, and fell over in the bed, and the Lord spoke to him. He said, you're running, you're doing, you're this, you're doing that, but you're not spending no time with me. Sometimes we operate out of our talent. We operate out of what we know. We need to spend time in God's presence so we can hear from God. Are y'all hearing me? Your knowledge will not sustain you. You need the direction of the Holy Ghost. You don't know tomorrow. He does. We need his direction. We need his, we need his instruction. Not every now and then we need it every day. So that our man perish, but the infant man is renewed. Not every Wednesday night, but day by day. Somebody ought to shout glory in this house. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit and his gifts in our churches. There is no addition here. There's no indication here or elsewhere in scripture that the manifestation of the spirit through gifts will cease at the end of the first century. Some churches, Church of Christ in particular, may name, may name Brother Tucker. I told you about this girl I liked. Her name was Lillian Tucker. I liked Lillian. She looked good. Boy. And I hit on her because I liked her. She was Church of Christ. Just a journey I hit on her because I, I like what I saw. And I, and, and, you know, and, I, and I told her how I felt about it. And she told me, Philemon, I feel the same way about you. But she said something else. She said, but my daddy ain't going to let you come to see me. Except you join the Church of Christ. I ain't said that to her from that day to this. <laughs> I know I wouldn't join no Church of Christ. So I, that, that, that was the end of me and religion right there. I was in the, I was in the 10th grade. But anyway, I brought that up for her daddy. His name was Tom Tucker. Boy, that man was something that 
He ate with something else. Tom Tucker was tough in that Church of Christ. He was Church of Christ preacher, guest, whatever he was. You know, if you if, if he rode with you, you wouldn't get a word in. Tom Tucker had to flow. I mean, he 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 knew his Bible. So he and I got to discuss it one day. Got to discuss it one day at First Baptist in Brownville, Tennessee, at a funeral service, and the, uh, the church was so full I couldn't get in there. So I was standing outside. He caught me outside on the tree, and we started talking about the gift of the Spirit. And he said, "That's for the apostles." I said, "You really believe?" Yeah. He said, "That's for." I said, "Hold this a minute." The Bible said, Peter said, "This is for you, for your children, and for them that are." Are for all. I asked him, who are those that are for all? He said, for you and your children and for them that are for all. He wouldn't talk about something else. Don't be in a persuasion that you can't stick with the Bible. If the Bible says it, I don't care what your persuasion believes, your persuasion is wrong, but the Bible is right. Are y'all hearing me? He, he would address that because his faith teaches that the, the spiritual gifts ended with the apostles. There's no Bible that teaches that. Why would God give the apostles the Holy Ghost and we struggling down here? <laughs> Dr. No, don't we need the Holy Ghost? Both Dr. Knows. Don't we need the Holy Ghost? Don't we need him in our lives? Yeah. Dick and Calvin, don't we need the Holy Ghost? Yes, How about Dick and Boyce? Yes, Dick and Jay? Yes, Dick and Ruff? Yes, Preacher Cole? Yes, Ella Gibb? Yes, don't we need the Holy Ghost? Don't we need the Holy Ghost, brother? Yes, I know we need them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the main word, don't we need the Holy Ghost? We need him in our walk. We need him to instruct us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, to build us up. We need the Holy Ghost. Tell us why we need the Holy Ghost. Yes, we do. We need him. He, he didn't stop. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I go back. If I go another way, he won't come. But I'm going away and I will send him in my name. Isn't that what he said? Somebody tell him something. And he shall be in you. He shall be with you. And he will instruct you into all truth. We need the Holy Ghost. To make real, to make real, to make God real unto us. Somebody shout glory in this house. The greatest love, I'm closing. It is clear from this chapter. That God exalts Christ-like character more than ministry. Faith are the possession of spiritual gifts. God values and emphasizes character that acts in love, patience, kindness, unselfishness, hatred for evil, and love for truth, honesty, and endurance in righteousness. Much more than faith to move mountains or to perform great achievements in the church. Some people are so charismatic. Preacher Coleman, some folk got, got, got it going on so on, their folk would just follow them because of their ability to, to be charismatic and how they can put things together, how they can organize. And sometimes God has nothing to do with it. When I was in the living room, I went to a... Uh, Graduation of my daughter, Pam. I think Pam graduated in 1974, I believe I'm right. Somewhere on the back of there, 70, yeah, 74, I believe I'm right. And went to this huge church, beautiful edifice. I, I really admired it. Everything looked beautiful when you were in the living room. You know. <laughs> That's where we were, in the living room. And, and I remember the Lord revealed something to me. And I was at mine, what, what, what a beautiful building. I really believe the Lord said that to me, but I've never been here. St. Peter's Square, I don't believe you can put a dollar value on that. I mean, it's a huge gold, that's gold all over the place. I, marbled, I mean, beautiful place, St. Peter's Square in Rome. I, I just don't know what the value of that building would be like. One of the largest churches. At one time, it was the largest church in the world. But I wonder, has Jesus ever been there? If the presence of God is not in the midst, we're just 
at a social club. We need the Holy Ghost, y'all. We need the gift working in our midst. It benefits all of us when God is using us to be a blessing to each other. That's what the Holy Ghost, he come to bless the church. The Holy Ghost come to bless God's people. Every time we come together, his presence is here to do us good. Mother, <coughs> excuse me, Mother, Mother Shaw, who was a sister to Mother, Mother Gloucester, Mother, what was her name, McLaughlin, what was her name? Gloucester? McLaughlin, McLaughlin. At that time, back in 1986, I was at the Women's Conference in Kansas City, Missouri. And I, I, Mother Shaw, I, that's when I first uh, encountered her. But every time the spirit would get high in the church, she would always get up, Mother Shaw would say that. She would say, God has come to do us good. And that's the truth. Every time the spirit of God comes in the church, he doesn't come to curse us out. He doesn't come to depress us. He comes to do us good. When, he, when, when you feel him moving in the church, that's the time to reach up. Catch on. Let him bless us. He's come to bless our soul, to, to, to bring a, a greater unity in our midst. We cannot have unity in the church without the presence of the Holy Ghost. Without him, minds are so distracted. Purpose are so diversified when, without him. But he brings us one. He makes us one. When we come together, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one place with one accord. That's why he came in such a mighty way, because 120 people had one mind. They were there for the same purpose. How many just love God tonight? God values and emphasizes character that acts in love, patience, kindness, unselfishness, hatred for evil, and love for truth. You cannot love evil and love truth too. Did y'all hear that? You can't love sin and love righteousness. You either are. You either love evil and hate righteousness or you love righteousness and hate evil. Because they, they don't coincide. They don't, they, they don't pull together. They have to be going the same way. Love.